Hello, welcome. Um, <clears throat> wanted to do a little flight demo here of uh, this new uh, rotorcraft that I've been working on. Uh, I'm kind of excited about this one. Uh, prior to 1.7.3, I really haven't had any reason to, to even look into a, a helicopter type frame, airframe because I've just been kind of, uh, you know, I know a lot of people do things with stock rotors uh, previously, but to me they always look kind of clunky and never really, uh, never really appealed to me very much. However, when the, the new 1.7.3 came out, um, man, I was just thrilled. I saw they added these rotors and uh, blades and, uh, you know, props, and I, I just couldn't be happier. And, it, you know, in my opinion, I know I've, I've seen some, some negative comments on the forums related to people that, you know, they're not crazy about the idea of having to uh, attach each blade individually, but um, I really love that. And, um, you know, hopefully in the process of, of me showing you how this thing works and the way uh, I set it up, maybe, uh, yeah, you know, you, I can, I can uh, explain some of the, the reasons why I, I think it works so well. Um, this particular design, uh, you know, people that maybe have followed some of my other designs, I. You know, I'm kind of an aviation buff, uh, helicopters, all things flying, really, airplanes, jets. Um, but I'm not a real big fan of, of doing, you know, trying to do exact uh, duplicates because I don't think that, you know, the Kerbal parts really lend well to that. So, you know, I'll, I'll let other folks do that and try to one-up each other. But uh, usually when I have a design in mind, I'm, I'm thinking of a number of different helicopters so for my first helicopter I needed a I needed something relatively quick so I wanted to do a, a you know, relatively small airframe and I was thinking in terms of something that can transport you know maybe five people so uh, it seemed uh, you know this little four-person cabin with a single cockpit seemed like a, a good start and when I started putting it together um, things came to mind you know, I grew up in the era of a TV show called Airwolf. So, you know, the Bell 222 helicopter from Airwolf um, came out. So I was thinking, oh yeah, it's going to need uh, you know some sort of wing pylons here, and that's where I'll mount the wheels, and it's going to need to have you know some jet thrust thrown in. Um, but then, you know, another uh, example, um, you know, I was thinking in terms of coaxial uh, rotors, uh, something like the uh, if you take a look online, maybe the Sikorsky S69. So uh, I came up with this coaxial design, and coaxial is the, you know, if you look at it from the top, it looks like a six-blade uh, rotor, but what it is is it's, it's two counter-rotating rotors. So you'll look at the leading edge of this rotor, it's going to be rotating in this direction. Leading edge here rotates in that direction, and that's all modeled, and it works wonderfully. And one advantage to this is I don't have to fiddle uh, with any sort of a tail rotor. Uh, the, the, the spinning action of these, these counteracts each other, and uh, it, it's pretty neat. It's a, it's a fun fun design, and uh, you know, I, I kind of like it. Um, but without, um, you know, it, it would be a little unfair, I think, uh, to just get right into it without doing a little bit of an explanation. So if you bear with me for a moment, I'm just going to open up uh, something here related to the rotor testing that I've done. And Let's see, was it rotor test, rotor test, rotor test, rotor test, there it is. So, this was one of the main reasons why uh, I didn't previously like rotors, and when 1.7.2 came out, they added this nifty um, rotor engine, and I thought, oh great, well I'll just attach some ailerons to it, and we'll, uh, we'll use that to make a, a prop. It, for this particular example, I was thinking something along the line of an Osprey uh, V22, um, but I was... Uh, a little disappointed when, as you'll see here, when I launch this, um, the characteristics of how the aileron interacts with that rotor engine um, are just not um, not good at all, and I'll show you what I mean. So if I actually, you see it looks fine here, if I actually start applying thrust, watch what happens. See how those spread out? Um, well, that was causing prop strikes and all sorts of horrible things, and uh, it just was not uh, conducive at all. So uh, I was pretty dismayed uh, with 1.7.2. You know, they gave me this 
this great engine, but uh, I really didn't feel like it had any use. Um, and I think I had made a comment about that on the forum, and you know, to my shock and surprise, uh, 1.7.3 came out, and they had these propeller parts, and I was, I was really pleasantly surprised, or maybe shocked, uh, but that, that, that they included that. So let's let's take a look at how you attach these things and what they how they're better. So I modified my little test setup here, uh, just added a gas tank to it, and we're going to go over to robotics. And we're going to put a turbo shaft engine on here. And I've heard, um, you know, a lot of people having a lot of difficulty. You know, we'll just talk about props here for a minute. Uh, how, how do you go about attaching these things? And what I find is, uh, let me go here, take a look. So there's a the really small one, the really big one. Uh, we're going to go for the the middle size one. And I'll go ahead and set this up. Uh, it's a little curious that it has, you know, you can control these attachment nodes, um, but we really don't need to mess with it because we can just use the uh, symmetry here. So we'll get this set up for, we'll call it three, and we'll just drop one of these straight on it. And I, I know people, uh, you know, I've seen comments where they're spending a lot of time trying to figure out, well, what's the right, you know, the, the, what's the right way to install this thing? And, what angle and really um, what you what you find out and what I'll show you here is that as you drop these propellers on they're set up optimally as they are you don't really don't need to do anything special to them so I connect them and that's about it um, an interesting characteristic of the engine is you do have control over um, the rotation direction and in most cases in civil aviation, the, the standard rotation direction is clockwise, so this is set up appropriately. Um, could you set up a, you know, w would it be good to have a situation where you have a twin engine, you set one clockwise, counterclockwise? Sure, and that would counteract some of the roll or um, offset that you get. But in reality, in, in real life, um, a lot of planes, even that are twin engine, they don't always have counter rotating. They, they on both sides of the wing, they'll have a a clockwise rotation and when you look at the mounting of the engine on the wing you'll see that actually that the the engines are actually asymmetric one another um, an engine on the left or right if you look at the position on the wing will be slightly closer or further away to the fuselage and that's because in in real life these props um, you know they talk about p factor and um, you know the, the planes pulling I think they pull a little bit to have a tendency to pull to the left, so you got to give right rudder when you're on takeoff. Um, but anyway, they center the, you know, the, the thrust of the engine, which is off to one side or the other, and uh, you know that's why it's it's slightly off. In Kerbal, I'm not seeing so much P factor. Um, I am seeing uh, when when you do these, you know, when you, when you put these props in place, they do cause the airplane to roll. In my case, I've seen more of a roll to the to the right, um, which would indicate a left rudder um, as opposed to right rudder. So it's a little bit opposite of what my expectation was, but there is some effect of, of that and there are ways to counter it. Um, but anyway, back to um, the proper uh, installation of these things. Notice the leading edge of the prop. Um, oh, one other thing I'll mention while I have this on here, both the rotor blades and the prop blades is if you right click on these, they do have variants for a clockwise counterclockwise. So in our case, we are clockwise and it's already set up, but if you were setting up counterclockwise, notice this striping. If I go counterclockwise, it would put it on the other side. Um, so when you set up your clockwise counterclockwise, uh, you should do likewise. Uh, make sure you, you have the right uh, variant selected for the color of your blade. Now. We go in here and take a look at this. Um, the one thing that I was very happy with was the idea that these blades are uh, variable pitch, uh, which I was really surprised and happy to see that they incorporated that. Um, right now, these are set up with uh, pitch yaw roll inactive and the deploy is retracted. And I think 
you know, a lot of people are spending a lot of time trying to, you know, do things with this where they're, you know, making these kind of, whoops, going wrong way here. Eh, we'll just take it off and start over with that. Oh, there we go. Um, you know, making the, you know, trying to make these, you know, these sorts of adjustments and what is good, what is bad, you know, what's perfect, optimal, etc. So we really don't need to worry about it. Like I said, when you install it just like that, notice the leading edge is going directly into the wind. And if you were to turn this engine on right now, it would just bat at the wind and wouldn't really do anything. Um, but what we're going to do is, rather than um, rely on pitch yaw roll, we're going to use the deployed, uh, and then we're going to adjust the authority limiter. Um, and what you'll find out is if you deploy them, now they turn. And this deployed position with 100 on the authority limiter, from what I found in my testing, happens to be kind of a good middle of the road for both takeoff and in flight of you know the kind of thrust that you need um, in order for, you know for all uh, methods of flight so in my mind just straight out of the box if you attach the props put them on and then turn off the deployed you'll get an authority limiter 100 so in my mind you know the people that are asking for hey I need a simplistic dumbed down version this really is the simplistic dumbed down version of a fixed prop with 100 authority limiter. Now, <clears throat> what you'll find out is if you do some testing, and uh, you know, we can probably go outside and mess around with that now. What you find is is that angle of attack on the blade um, as the the wind speed picks up. So as your plane's moving forward, the angle of attack would need to be feathered or adjusted in order to maintain you know a strong pull on the prop. So we'll put this up here and whoops, I forgot to let it go back. I actually forgot to assign it. Uh, base plane. All right, so we will do two things. We will go to our assignments. This is fairly simple. We'll do main throttle and we'll do it on the torque. And then we'll go to the up down translate, which is your up down arrow key on your keyboard. And we'll set that to the authority limiter there. So now we'll try that again. <clears throat> and I'll go ahead and turn on arrow forces so you can see what's happening. And as I increase, ah, oh, there we go. So you can see at 100, and you crank this thing up that's what you know that's the kind of force you're getting at a standstill um, if I use my up down arrow key um, we'll go ahead and display one of these so there we are with the authority limiter and if I use my up down arrow and I increase it you can see how at a standstill I can increase the pull of the prop now there's a point at which it kind of dies so if I get up to 140 that's probably about max if I go all the way to 150 I'm now I'm now my blade is completely flat and it's just kind of spitting in the air not doing anything so we'll go back to 140 so the idea being is at you know the, the whole idea of uh, these variable pitch props is at takeoff at a standstill you might want to be at an authority limiter set of 140 as your plane moves down the runway and you increase speed from zero through, let's say your takeoff speed is somewhere maybe in the range of 40 to 50 meters per second, your authority limiter, 
you would want to adjust that down. Now, the 100 will work. Um, it's just that, again, if I go all the way back to 100, you can see that the pull of the prop is probably half, maybe a third of uh, what you could be getting. So what that's going to do is it's going to cause your airplane to accelerate a lot slower. Um, it's going to take up a lot more runway. So the nice thing about these variable pitch props is if you set them up right, and I'll you know I'll give you some pointers there, and you'll see how I did it on this this rotorcraft. It's pretty interesting. Um, you basically start out your you know with your with your prop at 140, and then feather it back to about 120, and you'll see that when you're moving down the runway, these um, you know these lift vectors are going to be pushed further out, uh, but you know, from zero to 80, so you're you're moving from maybe 140 to about 120 on your authority limiter for takeoff. When you're actually up in flight and you get to you know, your top speed, whatever it happens to be, maybe 100 meters per second for a prop craft. Um, you know, we're not going crazy here. You know, to put these things in perspective, um, you know, the the world's fastest. I think the the current world record holder is a P51 Voodoo, um, and it's clocked at 550 miles per hour. Um, that's 246 meters per second. Um, a Cessna 152, which is a little two-person craft, um, it goes about 109 knots. That's about 125 miles per hour. That's 56 meters per second. So, you know, you're 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 looking for, you know, you, you expect a range of uh, speeds from these prop planes somewhere in the you know 56 to 240 ish range um, you know I've been tinkering around and you know, I can get some some props up close to 200 meters per second um, but I you know I haven't been trying too hard to to maximize it but that's kind of what, what you can expect with these um, anyway once you're up and you're cruising you're doing about 100 meters per second then this is going to be more in the 100 range and that's why when you first put these out there or first put these on the standard default setting is 100. Um, now let's go in and we'll talk a little bit about uh, rotors and how they're slightly different. So the other nice thing about installing them this way is it, on the feathering um, when you do set it up to your you know, your left right translate keys and you go left to right um, you actually can get if we take a look here let's suppose we're at zero so at zero uh, this is a pain I wish I, I wish somebody would would add the ability to enter in a number. This aggravates me so much. But anyway, minus one's close enough. You can see it's pointing straight ahead. If we feather it in the direction of you know, pulling the craft forward, you can see how the blades move. And if I go all the way the opposite direction, you can see it goes all the way the other way. So I know that this blade, I've got its full range of motion. Now, granted, you're not necessarily going to need all that range of motion, but you could, uh, you know, you could feather the prop such that even though it's spinning uh, in a clockwise direction, you know, you wouldn't want to do that in real life because you'd see the leading edge is protected, and you'd basically be uh, going into the air with a, you know, the wrong edge of the blade. Um, but you can, in Kerbal World, uh, use this method to actually cause your your blade still spinning in a clockwise direction to cause your plane to go backwards instead of forward. Um, so anyway, that is for a prop the correct way to install these. Now let's take a look for a second at rotors. So we'll take that out, put a rotor on, and we'll go middle of the road again here. We got a small one, medium, large. Uh, these medium sized ones are the ones that I used uh, on my Dragonfly. And we'll set it up again with uh, three. And you might think, oh, well, if it's good for the prop, it's good for the rotor. Well, having a rotorcraft bat at the air like this is probably not optimal. Um, however, if the range of motion was similar to a prop, um, I'd say, yeah, that's probably correct. However, watch what happens 
when I move these around. Let's see if I can get it to function. Oh, I'm sorry, I've got to and deploy. Okay, so look at the range of motion difference. You notice it's not going all the way over to the left, all the way over to the right. It's only giving me a very small change. Uh, you know, that's probably about a you know, 90 degree, maybe 45 in one, 45 in the other um, field of range. Um, so for these, um, if you start off zeroed um, and your engine is turning clockwise, you actually do want to turn these so that they're going to be spinning in the proper direction. So that is the starting point of where how rotors should be installed, leading edge for a clockwise rotation. And then, you know, again, now you can also see that, um, you know, if I use the, the limiter, you can see it makes sense. Okay, there's my up, down, and I'm getting you know, the full benefit of the blade in either direction. Um, it could be, you know, once you get good at this for the for the helicopter, I can maybe see giving it some, uh, you know, you might want to tweak that a little bit and give it a little bit more up as opposed to down. Um, but as a rule of thumb, set it up that way. And with that, I think we have enough, uh, you know, at least we have a, enough of an understanding of, of how these things are set up, um, you know, to actually start looking at, uh, looking at the helicopter. So let's pull that up. Uh, we don't need to save this. Open up the Dragonfly. So there are lots of, uh, lots of neat things um, that I kind of discovered while, while playing with this one. Um, Hopefully I'll remember everything to, to try to relate to you. Um, but uh, one of the first things is uh, you know, setting up of the, the engine. Um, here we've got the, this is the fuel, uh, the turbo shaft engine, so it's the one on the bottom. And then the one on the top is a standard electric rotor. Uh, what's interesting about the setup is the the rotor on the or the turbo shaft engine on the bottom. I guess I should put that on the bottom. Put this one on the top. Um, is going to be turning clockwise. My rotor on the top is going to be turning counterclockwise. Um, and the way I'm able to get them to both spin at roughly the same speed, is, there's two adjustment requirements. One is Notice the RPM limit on the bottom uh, engine is half of the RPM limit on the top. So by setting it up this way, my electric motor on the top is spinning at 230 RPMs on the top, and my gas-driven motor on the bottom is spinning at 230 RPMs on the bottom. Um, so that's the way I found I had to do it. Um, another thing uh, that I found is that the actual engine size, and you can't really see it um, in here because I started off with the motor disengaged, and I'll tell you why uh, shortly, but for right now, I'm gonna toggle that back on. So we go back to engaged, and it shows that I've adjusted these motor size outputs. You notice that the smaller electric motor on the top is set at a motor size output percent of 80. The motor on the bottom is much smaller size output 10 and what I'm looking at here when I'm trying to match up is I want them I want both of these motors to be turning about the same power and if you look at the the actual uh, KN I think that's uh, newtons or something I can't remember what the, the force reading is but the the power on the bottom at 10 is 55 and I've tried to match that on the top. It's a smaller motor, so it has to use more of its output in order to get roughly the same energy. So 56 is as close as I could get. Um, if I have to, in this case, what I found out, if one has to be larger than the other, I prefer that the top rotor uh, in my flight testing have more than the bottom. Uh, so anyway, 
that's that. Uh, another interesting uh, fact, you know, or, um, I don't know if it's a fact, maybe somebody will prove me wrong, but what I found out is that, you know, some people have said, you know, if you're using, you know, if you're using, if you've got your motor set up and you're reaching the max RPM limits with, you know, one, in this case, one, um, you know, 5, 10, 20, whatever it happens to be, anything that you add above it is really waste. And on the one hand, that is true. However, in the case of you know, this particular um, uh, helicopter, it's also got jets on it that are causing it to go forward. And what you're going to find out is rotors spinning um, when you're traveling forward at 100, 114, 115 meters per second it's having to overcome a lot of wind. And if you don't have more power on the engine, your rotors aren't going to be able to maintain their RPMs. So you need to be, you know, yes, to get up into a hover, maybe I only need, you know, 10% on my motor size. Uh, but if you actually fly it around and you watch, uh, you know, what your RPMs are, um, you know, you, you may want to, you know, tweak that up so that during flight you're not losing uh, RPM. Um, so anyway, uh, but it is interesting that you can adjust the, the motor size up and down and when you do, you notice that not only are you getting more power, um, but you're also adjusting mass. So these, you notice that you know, at 80, this one is about 0.17 and at 10, this one's about 0.22. So even though they're, you know, visually uh, one is uh, much larger than the other uh, from a mass standpoint uh, you know they're not too far too far apart and from an output they're about equal um, so anyway um, the other thing you know you can see that the you know leading edge is you know for the counterclockwise and the clockwise uh, you see leading edges of the blades are, are set up appropriately and again, those are you know the variant. So this is counterclockwise variant. Uh, this is clockwise variant uh, color schemes. Uh, another thing that I found in playing with these is that a lot of people are you know there's two things you got to you got to map. You've got to map the torque of the engine to something, and I think a lot of people do torque of the engine to throttle. Um, but then you also have to map blade pitch. To something and I've used up down arrow keys or that UD translate assignment um, however there is a third option and it's one that I like much much better um, and that is I actually use the KAL 1000 as an electronic uh, or an engine control module and I'll talk about that briefly here let's see if we can pull that up and we don't need these anymore. <clears throat> but in my assignments, they're, they're fairly simple. I try as best as I can to you know, follow a, a standard. And I really only have uh, three assignments related to the uh, you know, custom keys. I've got uh, custom one, which basically engages the turbo shaft engine, uh, both the top and bottom, and it turns on a fuel cell. And that's gonna be important, and I'll explain that a little bit later. Uh, item two is set to toggle the Juno engines, and item three is set as a brake on the turbo shaft engine, and that's uh, a nice, yeah, it's kind of a, another uh, thing that I'll, I'll talk about later on when I'm doing my flight testing. Now, when it comes down to main throttle and up-down translate, you notice I'm not using the up-down translate key for any sort of pitch. Um, I'm using my main throttle um, as a holder for the KAL controller. And in the KAL controller, I've got my upper blade pitch, lower blade pitch, my standard rotor, turbo shaft, and my Juno engines mapped. And this is really just uh, an amazing uh, feature. And the way you know a lot of people are looking at these and they use them for like you know walking bots and you know they think in terms of you know play and you know loop and really one, one thing that's kind of neat about it that that I, I was able to, to figure out 
uh, fairly quickly was that when I tried to uh, assign the KAL to my throttle, let's say I try to assign the KAL um, you know, to, to one of uh, these custom buttons. When I do that, it gives me all sorts of stuff uh, to choose from. And I was like, well, what, what happens if I try to do the same thing with a throttle? Well, when I go to a throttle, it only gives me two options, play position and play speed. And what I found out was the throttle, you know, it's got a full range of motion. And, you know, this is basically your play line, so it's doing different things at different points. But if you assign the play position to your throttle, Basically, this is your throttle at zero position, and as you go left to right, it's allowing you to map um, power curve profiles for various things. So that's zero throttle, 100% throttle. And it's just really, really cool because this lets me set up my throttle to control both my blade pitch um, as well as the RPMs, or I guess the torque of the engine. And not just doing it in a linear fashion, I can create and edit my own curves, as you, you've seen I've done here, and I can throw in all sorts of things. So let me just explain to you briefly uh, what's going on here. Um, so if we look at the upper blade pitch, uh, what we see is the, the first value. Uh, and the other, the other thing that I did is, by default, the length of time, I think it's five or something like that. I set mine to 100 because I'm thinking in terms of throttle percent. So this is your 0% position on your throttle. 50% would be somewhere here. This is, uh, what did I set this up at, 80? Yeah, so that's 80%. So I do different things depending on the position of my, my throttle. But what I'm starting out with on my blade pitch is um, I'm actually starting out with a slightly negative um, value, minus 5, and it ramps up to... 30 uh, and that's controlling my you know as I ramp up the throttle it's controlling the amount of of upward uh, downward feathering of the prop and likewise the lower blade pitch uh, one neat thing about this is they let you do copy paste so in order for me to do the upper blade pitch all I need to do is once I had that I wanted the bottom blade pitch to be the same but it needed to be inverted um, and it was very simple, you know, all I had to do was, uh, you know, I could do a copy, so they got to figure, you know, copy row value, come down here in a blade pitch and hit paste, and it pastes in an exact duplicate, but I want the opposite, so they've got a mirror feature, and there it is, it's mirrored. Uh, just wonderful how this was set up. And then to add, add and delete points, it's very simple, you know, anywhere along here, you hit the button, it would add another, you know, add another node that you could modify, so it's very, very cool. Um, so maybe this one you know, goes 0 up to 30 and then what happens out here? Well I found out that at about a 15 uh, blade pitch that seems to be where it, this particular craft likes to hover. So what I thought would be pretty cool was is that you know, in addition to uh, you know, adjusting my blade pitch here I am adjusting the, the rotor torque. So what's happening here? Well from 0 up to about 10% throttle which or actually this is 5% throttle, um, there's no input as far as uh, you know, the, the torque. Um, and I might change that. Uh, we'll see. I, I'm still tinkering with it a bit. But the idea is um, eventually it starts ramping up um, the torque on the engine. You can see how it, it goes from you know, zero up to, what is it, 100? Yeah, up to 100 at the 80%, and then it holds constant here. And the reason why on the last 80% um, I set it up that way was because I wanted to be able to have some Juno jet engines kick in on the backside. So we're going to turn on the Junos, uh, which is pretty cool, and they're not going to do anything on my throttle until I get all the way up to 80%, and then they ramp up very quickly. So what that lets me do is I can basically use the, you know, the blades... Um, to basically control hover up to a certain point and then once I get up to 80% throttle um, it kicks in the jet en jet engines and from 80 to 100 it's assuming that I really want to go fast uh, so then as I back off throttle it takes down 
the Juno jet engines, and then uh, it goes into a, you know, back into a controlled hover. Um, what what was interesting is, um, you know, the act, you know, the max lift was, you know, I found to be about 30-ish. So if I open one of these, so that was my max point, and I found that the hover was 15. So I thought as I increase my Juno jet engine, I wanted to decrease my, you know, upward pull, and I wanted to get more to a, a level. So that's why when the Junos start in, I'm also decreasing the, uh, you know, the, the upward feathering on the on the rotors to control that upward position. Um, so anyway, uh, a lot of explanation, and uh, you know, maybe now we'll see how it flies. So right off the bat, um, you know, there, there's a few keys required. When this thing rolls out onto the runway, it won't have brakes on the wheels, so it tends to roll a little bit. And uh, usually the first thing I do is I put the brakes on. Um, second thing to do is go ahead and use your stage to bring your jet engine online, even though it really has no power at this point. And we can we can watch it. We can watch lots of stuff. There's a lot of interesting things going on. So we'll monitor the, the Junos. And here you notice as I could ramp up the, the power and it wouldn't do anything related to the um, you know, to the jets. See there's no thrust going on with the jets whatsoever. Um, the second thing to do is uh, I've got the key one assigned to these engines. Um, one thing that I Let's go back, revert. One thing I forgot to do, so we'll go back to the space plane hangar. I need to pull out a, a version of this that I didn't tinker with. So we'll open this up and load the dragonfly. There it is. Uh, if you remember when I was looking at this, I showed you that the motor was, I had, to un, I had to engage it in order for you to see that. I forgot to undo that, but by default, it comes out with the motors, the rotors disengaged. and the reason that it does that is that electric motor, um, as well as some of those control wheels uh, that it's using, um, really burns through a lot of electricity. So I had to put in, um, you know, fuel cells, and you'll see the see the fuel cells. Uh, there's one there, one there, and then of course there's two on the other side. And those fuel cells are really going to, you know, they're, they're absolutely required. Otherwise, this electric charge uh, goes to zero very quickly. And one of the things I, you know, wanted to do was to make sure that when I start up this helicopter as part of the startup sequence, I always want to turn on the fuel cells. So what I did is my number one key um, engages. Uh, the rotors to the engine. So in my mind, this is working, you know, although it's not exactly game-wise, it's working kind of like the way I would expect a real helicopter to work. So I'll put on T for my SAS assistance. We've got the brake on. Toggle on the engine. The space. But now, if I were to give it thrust, it wouldn't really do anything because I haven't engaged the rotor engine. <clears throat> the only neat thing about setting it up this way is uh, you know, I think it's probably a glitch. They haven't yet added sound. Uh, so it actually, having the little Junos on at least gives it a little bit of sound and it, it, it seems a little nicer to play with right now. But if, you, if I didn't have these engines on here, the thing would be absolutely silent. And hopefully they'll, they'll fix that in an upcoming update. But you can see I could ramp this all the way up and as I keep going up, 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 nothing's happening because I've my Junos only start to kick in when it's up in the 80% range which is what I want. Now let's take a look at what the turbo shaft engine down here, the, the, the top engine up here, and when I start these off uh, they say disengaged so in my mind the rotors have not been attached or engaged to the engine so when you hit the one key that changes, and now it engages the rotors to the engine. So now as I apply speed, the rotors will spin up. And 
one thing that I did, the you know, reason why I did it that way is because I also tied turning on the fuel cells with engaging the engine. So I will never run out of electric charge if I use the one key to do that. Uh, so that's my, my reason behind that. So here, if I increase my throttle, you can see I get a very little, and you know, the blades are spinning counter. Hey, look at that, it actually, it actually works. Um, we'll go ahead and track the authority limiter. So there's your negative one. So it's actually a little bit of downforce. And there's the other one. So they're running counter of each other. And as I increase these, you can see that my, you know, three, four, it won't actually make enough, you know, how are my engines doing? Let's see, we're at 460 RPMs there. This one is the bottom. So we're at 230. So we're at full RPMs. So as long as I can get, you know, when I get my authority limiter up into the 8 to 10 range, this should start start covering. Um, and we'll go ahead and put on the aerodynamic forces so you can see. Interesting that even though it's a negative, and if I pull it back, see it back, back, back there, now you see that <clears throat> it's actually kind of sticking it to the runway now. Now the, the, lifter, the lift vector is pointing down instead of up. Um, so there. We'll increase so well, let's go ahead and uh, take it up so we'll go up 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 and you can see we're going six negative six but you see all the lift vectors pointing up 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 and we'll increase throttle increase throttle and there it is so at 14 ish <clears throat> remember I said I think it was about 15 <clears throat> I figured out was a good uh, bring the wheels up it's kind of a level flight and you can see I'm Climbing ever so slowly, but we'll pull this back throttle a little bit and 16. I mean that's almost a hover, but um, I've just been really happy. Uh, look at that beautiful control um, with these new parts, and uh, yeah, I, I think everyone would really really like these, uh, but. Anyway, we'll go ahead, you can see the, the lift vector here. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it all the way up to like around the 80% range. And that should get me close to, remember I set my authority limiter at about 30. So when these max out at 30 minus 30, that should be my maximum upward. Oh yeah, yeah so I'm getting a lot of lift. So it's pulling me up you know, pretty quickly. And one thing that I found out, and one of the reasons why I have slightly negative um, when I get close to zero is, is that when I actually brought this all the way back to zero, right there, this thing, I mean, look at that. It's, at first, that's, when I was throttling down, that's the speed, that's essentially auto rotation. Um, there's no, look at my, uh, you know, I can bring my torque all the way down to zero, practically. And um, I wasn't getting enough downward movement. So I actually had to add a little bit of negative um, just to get the thing to move down a little slow, a little quicker. So watch, you know, if I pull back, even though it's showing upward, you know, uh, look at my authority limiter, it's negative. Um, but look at the, the control that gives me. I can, it really, just as I move the, the throttle up, down. Um, just very cool. Um, it wasn't moving down quick enough, is kind of what I'm getting at. So, uh, but anyway, let's, let's see where we can land this thing. So we'll put the, the wheels down. And I do prefer landing helicopters with brakes on, so we'll leave the, the brakes on. And, you know, there's lots of places we could go. Uh, I guess the, the big helipad would be would be easy. Maybe we'll go, we'll go over here to the bridge. A little harder, harder target. Uh, so we know 15-ish is our 
there a hover? Let's see. I know I'm going slow. Look at that. And what a great controlling feature. I, I just, I love these rotors. Um, the fact that you can, uh, you know, you can put as many on as you want. Uh, it's just wonderful. I, I could not have asked, uh, you know, Squad could not have done it for me, any better than the way they've implemented it. Um, just great. And this Cal controller, uh, you can see uh, what it does. But now let's let's see what we can do. Um, you know, our max speed for you know a couple of our target aircraft, uh, the Bell 222, which you know is kind of in my mind the the Airwolf and the Sikorsky S69 coaxial. The Bell 222 max speed is about 67 meters per second, which is about 150 miles per hour, 130 knots. The Sikorsky coaxial is quite impressive. That one is a, you know, almost double the speed. Actually, it is double the speed of the Bell 222. It's 303 mile per hour, um, 263 knots. That's about 135.5 meters per second. So our little dragonfly here uh, with our Junos uh, is capable of getting right in, you know, uh, closer to the Sikorsky. So I've got a, a nice little coaxial uh, aircraft design, and it can hit about 114 meters per second. So that's about 255 miles per hour, you know, 220, 222 knots. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll take it up. So we'll throttle up. Uh, gear up. And I've gone max on my throttle, so look, the, the Juno's come in. Hey, cool. And there's a point here where you know, forward momentum is going to cause the plane or the, the helicopter to start acting more like a plane than it is a helicopter. And um, remember the other thing that I did was I had set, when I'm at max throttle, I brought that authority limiter down to 15, so it's kind of at a hover. Um, so it's very interesting uh, how you can map things with this. Uh, I really, really like it. Um, one thing that I will mention is that with the rotors and the propellers, you do get you get some roll. And this particular craft, I noticed a roll to the right. So to counter it at speed, I wanted to be able to make it, you know, I wanted to roll it to the left. And the way I've done that is using um, aileron trim tabs. And the ailerons on this are, you know, I use the blade setup in a lot of my, my aircraft, but this forward blade notice if I, you know, those are basically my ailerons. Um, and a lot of times I have these back set up opposite. Um, oh, there's getting a little, bit of, a little bit of roll here as I get up, up to speed. So I'm at 112 meters per second. It's rolling a little bit to the right. Well, it's rolling to the right because I built in some counter. Uh, I added these elevator tabs, trim tabs, um, to both sides. And they're set at 24 minus 24 at design time in the SPH. But originally, um, they were zeroed out, so they were neutral. And look at what happens at speed. And you see how you get this roll to the right? So what do you do to counter that? I've had, you know, I've seen people ask that about the airplanes, and the answer for me is add aileron trim tabs. I know there's a way to go in and do you know, some trims with the off button. I've never had it work very well. And the thing about using off button is every single time you get in the airplane, you've got to reset it. The next thing about adding these trim tabs is, is that at design time, I can set it with a default. So I had it at like 24. I mapped that to my uh, left-right translate keys. So that roll to the right, I'm going to hit left arrow key. You can see it's adjusting. And you see how what it's doing is it's adjusting these trim tabs so that while I'm in flight, if I'm getting that roll, I can just use the left right arrow key a little bit and flatten myself out. 
So there. So now I'm cruising along at 110, 111, um, and I'm relatively straight and level. Uh, so I really like, and you know, I've I've converted a you know a few propeller driven aircraft now, and I see the same thing. Uh, I needed to add elevator or aileron trim tabs to this. Just to show that you know I'm not it's not overly crazy here. We can take off the SAS. And, you know, I, I might have to adjust it, but it's not flying too crazy with that SAS. But a little smoother for me. You know, some people say, ah, your planes are no good if you turn on that. I just to me it feels uh, it feels more like a real airplane when SAS is on, so I use it. My new corporate helicopter, yay! Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, I, I, it actually turned out better than I thought. I didn't think I was going to be able to fit five Kerbals in it, but uh, let's see how they, yeah, yeah, look at there. Line it around. It's kind of important to have that uh, downward slanting nose uh, if you're flying low and slow. Oh, I made 117. So 117, I'll plug that into my. 117 is my new top speed, so that's uh, 262 miles per hour, 227 knots. Whoa, don't crash. That's pretty pretty decent for a, a first first helo with a pair of Junos on it. Um, and again, the you know check out my RPMs. You see at that speed, 109. Notice how I'm not making 460 RPMs. Uh, it's because these engines have to work harder uh, when you're cutting through the air. Uh, I found out that you know that the setting that I have is okay as it is, so it's all right that it's not maxing out at 460. But just to, to show you what I was talking about there, at speed, um, you're not going to be able to maintain 460. You're going to need more uh, more motor power. So we're going to throttle back now. We'll take the the Juno's offline. Look at that, it increased our our lift a bit. And I'll pull up and throttle back at the same time and it should force us down pretty well. I need to turn myself around here. Uh, 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 there we go. Ah, oh, don't crash. Uh, my orientation screwed up. There we go. Uh, now, now it's flying nicely. I fly RC planes a lot. I've gotten kind of used to it, but I'm a little out of practice, so... The orientation can be tough. So we'll put gear down. And you look at my... Look at those blade... Over here you can see the minus plus three is kind of where I'm at. As we increase. And my electric charge still looks decent, so my fuel cells are doing well. And as I get closer to the ground, and the level of control is just great. I don't know. I may never. Uh, I may never fly my uh, jet V tolls again. That that thing is just too much fun. Uh, I mean, you can even if you bring it up gradually, gradually, gradually. Oh, 
Look at that hover. What a lot of fun. I tell you, I thought I was about done with Kerbal Space Program. I don't think I've built a craft in nearly a year. And then these, uh, uh, these rotors and props came out. Look at this. Yeah, I could fly through there, but the camera goes wonky. Here, we'll fly it, fly it into the hangar. Unreal. All right, so the the last uh, thing, you know, as you're you're coming in, um, so shutdown sequence, you'd hit uh, number two. That'll cut your Juno jets. And right now, there's no, you know, there's no um, no torque being applied to the engines. So these blades are just free spinning. And I didn't mention it previously, I think, but uh, one thing that I I all I I found I really need to do is is both for the props and for the rotor craft. By default, these engines um, have a braking feature, and the brakes are automatically um, tied to the brake um, tied to this brake. And I always turn that off because I want to be able to sit on the runway, whether I'm in a prop craft or a rotor craft, and I want that engine to be able to spin when I have my brakes on. Um, so I, you know that's maybe one situation where the default setting is just always a, a no for me. Um, you know maybe they do it because the electric motors can also you know, serve as as wheels or you know who knows what, but. Uh, you know, that's one thing. But now I've got this blade spinning in seemingly forever format. Um, if I hit the three button, this is where the... There, so we hit three, and it actually applies brakes to the rotor blades. Now, when you're going to start it up again, um, if you... And then you could... Uh, you know, the other thing is, you know, right now the the engines and the fuel cells are engaged. Um, you could hit one, and it would turn off that, and you'd also see the the motor would go. You know, now they're disengaged, and now my fuel cells are are off. Um, and the reason the electric is still wearing down is I still have T. So if I hit SAS off, now you can see no more electric charge. Uh, but now as I start back up, if I forget that I've got brakes on. Uh, the rotors won't turn. So there's two reasons why the rotors wouldn't turn. One would be you forgot to hit one to engage. Uh, the other one would be you know hit the three key uh, to turn the brakes off. But uh, what a blast! Anyway, hope you liked it and uh, you know watch for the watch for the dragonfly uh, soon. I'll probably be posting this one to uh, to Kerbal X here in the next uh, few days. Thanks. Bye.